Hello, Professor Eon. Hello, Angela. Thank you for taking the time out of your busy schedules to meet with me on such short notice. I appreciate this opportunity. My name is Leon Spanner, and I'm here to talk to you about winning forward with Walmart's price strategy. But first, let me tell you a story. A young boy grows up during the Great Depression. He knows what it is to struggle. You see, this boy has a dream, a vision. He wants to offer affordable prices on retail goods for everyone. And he pitches his idea to a group of investors. He says, let's disrupt the supply chain, cut out the middleman, buy enough bulk to dictate pricing, discount merchandise, pass on the savings to the consumer, more sales. The investors laugh him out of the room, so he decides to go it alone. This young man I'm telling you about today is Sam Walton, founder of Walmart. Today, Walmart is the world's largest company with an annual revenue of $542 billion. With so much at stake, it is of paramount importance to predict price in terms of both accuracy and precision. You see, a prediction not rooted in the balanced approach of forecasting sales with historical data can and will have severe consequences for this retailer and its shareholders. In a perfect world, the optimal price will exist when and where the marginal revenue is equal to the marginal cost. So what this means is that when these two lines intersect, the additional revenue generated from selling one more unit of product precisely offsets the additional cost of producing that same unit. This is where we maximize profit. But we don't live in a perfect world, do we? We live in an ever-changing, evolving market economy. How you price your products plays into the consumer psyche. You don't want to offer a lower price while sacrificing product or service quality. You also don't want to overcharge your consumers in exchange for only a mediocre quality of product. A higher price, on the other hand, is often associated with a higher quality of product. But remember, Walmart is a discount retailer. We find that an optimal price strategy hinges on the best case scenario for consumers a high quality product with a low price. Here's the bottom line. Pricing the products above cost, but low enough for the average middle class consumer to afford and getting this right in the first quarter will boost revenue and maximize profits long term. However, for this to work effectively and efficiently, our analyst must review the pricing strategy for the first quarter and make recommendations from findings for the remaining months in the year. An effective, consistent, and sensible pricing strategy must be maintained for an upward trending sales trajectory. Look, we're not attesting to a specific strategy that Walmart has used in the past. In other words, what you may deem as debatable among these various pricing strategies, they're all viable strategies uh, for some retailer at some point in time. Hence, this is why they're all part of this matrix. We're merely proposing a pricing strategy that gives the best value for the lowest price. So here's the good news. Phase one of this project is complete. We took to Microsoft Excel to get an initial read on data source from Kaggle, which is a public data repository. However, since Excel is only equipped to handle no more than roughly 1 million rows, we took our analysis to a different software and discovered that there were in excess of roughly 6.8 million rows of data. You see, this data consists of the following attributes. The ID of the store, in other words, the store location in any one of the three states of California, Wisconsin, and Texas. And then we have item ID, which is essentially a product category in any one of the following hobbies, foods, or household items. And lastly, we have the price of each good sold. With this amount of data, we were determined to get an initial read on the average price. And so we did. The average price across all product categories is about $4. Moreover, 
there are over 16 million transactions between the $2 and $4 price points, leaning in favor of an optimal price within that range. In moving forward, let us bring to light the requirements, assumptions, and constraints while ensuring that they are fully understood by all parties involved. To narrow the focus of the final product, understanding trends and patterns should not be a complex undertaking that only people well-versed in the language of data analytics need to understand. This is precisely why we have laid out our price models as high-level graphs and charts that show overall trends. Currency will be measured in US dollars, while all narratives will be provided in the English language. As we progress into phase two, the ensuing price models will be evaluated and reevaluated until deployment is finalized, at which point the VP of marketing and the chief financial officer will work on ensuring repeatability and implementation by using the template built on Tableau desktop. So let's consider the following schedule, aligning with the business's expectations on milestones and hard deadlines. As of right now, we've wrapped up phase one, which consists of business and data understanding, as well as data preparation. We've given you a primer on the price model concept and provided visualizations that support an optimal target price range. Billable hours in terms of rates have already been approved for phase one, but now, that we're approaching phase two, which consists of modeling, evaluation, and deployment. All we're asking for is additional time and resources, an additional two to three months, to build out and evaluate the price model. Subsequent deployment and redeployment will be contracted out as needed. In so doing, we are operating under the following assumptions. First and foremost, Walmart, as a publicly traded company, provides detailed financial statements not limited to statement of cash flow, income statement, and balance sheet. Next, the data is extractable with relative ease once provided access to the necessary infrastructure. And lastly, suppliers across all product categories will not increase their prices. Before we move forward, we must recognize the following constraints. Aligning everyone's schedules and expectations at this stage is critical for the ultimate success of the project, but a constraint in its own right. Next, there must exist no tacit understandings between Walmart, its subsidiaries, or competitors with respect to price fixing. To this end, we must adhere to the Sherman Act, which outlaws any form of monopolization. Lastly, without proper testing and training, the algorithm itself, left to its own devices, may outprice other competitors beyond a reasonable measure. To this end, Walmart has more than one product category, necessary household items, for example, sanitizers and other valuables for combating COVID-19 may become inaccessible to its buyers. Ladies and gentlemen, the successful completion of the price model hinges not only on one set of key performance indicators mentioned today. We need to look at the product categories we need to properly assess the model for accuracy. During these tumultuous times of COVID-19, we understand that resources normally allocated to extended funding beyond the normal project's size and scope may be scarce. That being said, we cannot in good faith abandon the work we have done thus far in phase one. We must press on with the idea or notion that success hinges on deep and meaningful work. There is a human element in all of this. Sam Walton was once turned away by investors, yet he succeeded beyond everyone's wildest imagination. All that we ask is that you continue funding our project into phase two. Please be our shining light and glimmer of hope. Thank you so much for your time today. Goodbye.